spent the last couple weeks designing and 3D printing a custom cine mod for my vintage Tacomar lenses. I ran into a few issues along the way and wanted to make this video to help out anyone else who's interested in taking a crack at designing and fabricating their own custom cine mods. There are a few things I would recommend to make the whole process easier. A set of digital calipers. You can always go the route of printing off strips of paper to measure, but if you really want to get accurate results, you want to make sure you have a set of calipers to work with, preferably with two decimal point accuracy. Fusion 360 is incredibly easy to use and free for hobbyists, with a limit of 10 active editable documents. This limit can be increased if you purchase a subscription, but the subscription isn't necessary as you can make your projects read only when you're not working on them. As for a slicing software, I'd recommend downloading Ultimator Cura. I currently have an Ender 3 and I've had successful results with the advanced settings in Cura. The first step is going to be to take measurements of the lens you're planning on modifying. If you're only looking to design a follow focused gear, you can measure the diameter of the focus ring on your lens. Make sure to take a few measurements in different places around the focus ring to average out your results. The next thing you'll want to do is measure the height of the focus ring so you know how tall or short to make the focus gear. I prefer to make my gears tall so I don't have to adjust my follow focus motor placement if I'm swapping between lenses, but there's nothing wrong with making them shorter. The next thing I would suggest is measuring the diameter of the aperture ring if you wish to do a full cine mod. This aperture ring won't be as tall as the focus ring because we still want to be able to see the focus markings on the lens. After you measure the aperture ring, measure the distance from the bottom of the focus ring to the top of the aperture ring, so that you know how big to make the spacer that goes before the focus gear. The next step is to open up a website that I'll link in the description below to help you calculate the number of teeth and the pitch of the gear. On this website, I'm going to direct your attention to the middle of the screen here where it says gear tooth count. The important part here is to input your desired outer diameter of the gear. I make all my gears 82 millimeters to standardize them, but feel free to make them whatever size you like. A good rule of thumb is to make them at least 10 millimeters bigger than the inner diameter to give the gear some rigidity and strength. It is also important to make sure the pitch is mod 0.8 so the gear will be compatible with the follow focus. Now that you have all your measurements, it's time to open up Fusion 360. Start a new project. Name it whatever you'd like, and the first thing we want to do is go to Tools and then click on the Add Ins button. Once you do that, you'll be greeted with a bunch of scripts, but the one we're looking for is called Spur Gear. I use the one with the Python logo beside it, but they're both the same. Click Run on this program and you will be greeted with this little window. The only numbers you want to change here are the module number, which will be set to 0.8, the number of teeth, which you will set to whatever you got when you plugged in the numbers on the website previously. When you get to backlash and root fillet radius, you can leave both of those at zero. As for the gear thickness, now is the time to input measurements you got for the follow focus ring previously. Finally, hole diameter can be set to the diameter of the focus ring on your lens. Once you've finished all this, click OK and your gear will be created. You can stop now if you're satisfied with the gear you've made, but if you want that gear to be chamfered, there's an easy way to do so. First thing you want to do is click a face in the top right to orient your camera to the side view of the gear. Next, click back to the solid tab and create a sketch. Select the planar face that aligns with the side view of the gear. Click on the line tool and then most importantly, click over to line type on the right of the screen and click construction line. Now what you want to do is make a straight line from the top to the bottom of the gear and intersect that line in the middle to extend out past the gear. Disable the construction line type by clicking it and then go back to the line tool to create a small triangle the size of the chamfer you'd like on the lens. I usually do a 2mm by 2mm triangle. Next. Click on the mirror button and select all three lines for the object. Then select the construction line you made earlier as the mirror point. Click OK, then move the triangle in towards the gear. Zoom in if you want to get exactly to the start of the teeth. And once you're finished that, click Finish Sketch. You can now temporarily disable the visibility of the spur gear on the left of the screen. Now click on both of the triangles while holding control and open up Revolve under the Create tab at the top. Select the blue Z axis 
and set the angle to 360 degrees and operation to cut. You can re-enable the spur gear visibility before clicking OK to make sure it's performing the way you want it to. Click OK and the chaffer will be applied to your gear. You can stop there if you're only interested in creating the focus gear. I will be explaining how I made the aperture ring and spacer to complete the cine run, so if you'd like, you can skip to the timestamp on the screen to get to the slicer settings for proper prints. For those of you that are interested in doing the whole process, here we go. This part is very similar to what we just went over, so I'm going to speed it up so you don't have to watch it twice. You can make the aperture ring smaller because it's going to be beefed up by the spacer, so once you get your aperture ring gear made, we're going to make use of the revolve tool again to create our spacer. So start a new sketch on a side view of the aperture ring and start by making a line straight up based off your measurements. The next part is important because you want the top part of the spacer to match up with the outer diameter of the focus ring. Take the inspection tool and find the diameter of the chamfered gear. Take half of it to figure out your length. Once you do that, I like to make a straight line down and then another to connect it to the aperture ring to give it a bit more protection. Once you're finished with that, all that's left to do is make a cutout for the focus markings and chamfer the edges and you're done. Make sure to double check all your measurements, and once you're done, you're ready to export. Now that our model is ready to be saved, all you have to do is right click on the Spur Gear 101 and 70 teeth. Select Save As STL, and you're good to go. I like to keep my save settings set to binary and medium quality, because that's what I found works best. The next part is where I spent most of my time figuring out and working out the kinks in the settings with my Ender 3. The first thing you want to do is open up Ultimaker Cura, and import your STL file. As soon as you do that, you will see it pop up on the screen. There is a menu on the side of the screen that lets you move and scale your object. I'm going to show you how to scale the height of your gear without having to go back into Fusion in case you decide you want it taller or shorter. Some printers have problems with printing the right height, so I found keeping the Cura slicer open until I know the print is accurate works best. Now that you know where that is, I'll show you how to change the print quality settings to the settings that worked for me. I will make my setting preset available to download in the description if you'd like, but I'm also going to show you how to set it yourself. The setting you want to look at first is Build Plate Adhesion. If you don't have to use a raft, don't use it, because it's hell trying to remove it. I opt for Sturt Adhesion myself because it cleans the nozzle and gets it ready for nice layers. The most important setting to look at is the Horizontal Hole Expansion. I can't tell you how many times I tried to print prototypes only for the inner diameter to be way off because of the thermal expansion of the plastic. If you need the hole to be bigger, use a positive number, and if you want it to be smaller, use a negative number. This setting may not be on by default, so you will have to enable it or search for it in the search bar. You can also play around with initial layer horizontal expansion if you are getting bad elephant footing on your prints. I haven't had an issue with it because the gear already has a chamfer, so you don't really notice it. Your first print may fit exactly the way you need it, or it may not. So I suggest for the first print to use a lower infill percentage to save yourself time and material. At the end of the day, if you want a really snug fit, you may need to do some light sanding. Now that your model is prepared, hit slice, load it onto your SD card, and start printing. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below if I helped you guys out at all. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you're interested in this content and want more of it in the future.